Have you ever wondered how all the chemical elements are made? Then join me as we are lifting all the Stardust secrets to understand the cosmic origin of the chemical elements. We have come to the end of our little journey where we wanted to explore the origin of the chemical elements. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I could help you to understand that this is actually not just one origin, it's a whole process and it's a process that's still going on. So let's summarize what we covered. Well, we talked a lot about fusion and neutron capture processes that create all the elements in the first place. We talked a little bit about where that happens, maybe in the cores of stars, as well as in supernovae and in neutron star mergers. And if once these elements are created, they can then be observed and they contribute to the chemical evolution of the universe. If they are um, produced in the early universe, then we can um, see them in the older stars. So if produced in the early universe, then we have this chance of observing clean signatures. Today that is not possible anymore because chemical evolution has moved on too far. It's too messy today. And so we use the most metal pore stars in order to uh, detect these clean signatures and to work with nuclear physicists to understand how these processes exactly work and in what astrophysical sites that might occur. So here we have the oldest stars and one uh, reason why we can infer that these stars must be very old because if they weren't we wouldn't get these very clean signatures that were only present at the earliest times. Now the, the very fortunate coincidence for us is that these older stars actually found in the Milky Way today so they are fairly local objects and that is a great advantage over uh, very distant galaxies that are also often used to study the early universe. We, uh, we find them in the Milky Way, but we need the kind of data, of course, to do a chemical um, analysis. And we do that with spectroscopic observations. And we use the world's largest telescopes for that. Um, because only they can uh, give us the kind of data quality that we need in order to um, measure these tiny little absorption lines that tell us about the composition of all the different elements across the periodic table. And then finally, if we put this all together, we can determine the chemical composition of our old stars. And actually we can do so not just of old stars, but of stars at a variety of ages, a variety of metal contents. And that helps us to piece together how the amount of each metal actually changed with time. And um, that's, that's a, a very exciting prospect. So that's chemical evolution. And uh, as I mentioned before, this is an ongoing process. Much of all the elements are still being produced right now. There's probably a supernova going off right now as we speak somewhere in the universe where more elements are being created and so the, the chemical makeup of the universe is changed again. So it's a continuously changing process. Um, and um, that brings us to, to the end. So this is really all the star stuff that we are made of. And uh, well, the origin is not entirely stars, but also stellar remnants. As I mentioned, supernovae and neutron star mergers um, should be included in that. But um, yeah, that, that is really our, our cosmic origin as, as humans. It lays in the cosmos, in the cosmic objects, in a variety of them. And it takes a whole bunch of processes in order to unravel that, uh, start, all those stardust secrets. And one last thing I wanted to mention, uh, doing this kind of work uh, with all the different elements has shown pretty clearly that carbon is uh, not only the most important element for us humans because all life forms are carbon based, it actually turns out it's also the most important element in the universe because at that early time it needed uh, the carbon to help for the gas to come together and to form small stars and small structures and so I think um, carbon really plays the most fundamental role in the universe that we can think of uh, because it helps star formation and galaxy formation and ultimately planet formation and the formation of life.